Hello, my beautiful friends. It is I, Carrie, and I am shifting in my chair. I apologize. I'm a little uncomfortable. My cat Venus has been having a free-for-all with adjusting my camera, so it's a little out of whack right now. I apologize. But we're getting back to Dicey's song because it's been too long, and I really, I want to enjoy the book again with you guys. So we're going to read it. I am going to drink a little bit of my Dunkin' iced coffee. Caramel Skim Light Ice. That is my classic go-to. Unless they have Oreo. They had Oreo a couple summers ago. Man, that was good. I wish they'd bring that back. Anywho, okay, Dicey's Song. I've been reading in segments of chapters because the chapters seem longer, and I want to try to keep these videos down to like 15 minutes, 20 tops, so that I don't end up having the videos cut out, as they have several times. I apologize for that inconvenience, but okay. But that preamble, one minute wasted, let me get back to, I think, where I left off. I apologize if any of this is repetitive. Outside was better than inside. Dicey always thought that. In Provincetown, when they had lived with their mama, they were always outside, on the dunes and down by the rushing water. Summer times, they would go out early in the morning and stay all day. The rooms in their little cabin were awfully small, especially with four children and one of them, Sammy, so they had spent all the time they could outside. But even here in Graham's house, with its big boxy rooms, Dicey preferred outside. She liked the water. She liked the stretch of water leading before her, and she liked the stretch of sky overhead. Dicey crossed the lawn at the back, went through the garden, and then headed down the narrow path through the tall marsh grasses. Overhead, the growing darkness turned the sky to the color of blueberries, and long clouds floated gray. The only movement Dicey could see in the bay, when she sat dangling her feet over the end of the dock, was the turgid, slow sweeping of tide. She wiped sweat off her forehead. She looked out across the flat water. Just a band of burning orange was left from the sunset, but the water caught that and transformed it, lying before Dicey like a field of gold, like cloth of gold. Dicey was feeling edgy and not really like herself. Probably, she told herself, it was all these changes that were permanent. The new home and the new school and Graham. But Dicey didn't mind changes. She's gotten, she'd gotten used to them over the summer. For a minute, she unrolled the adventures of, adventures of the summer out, like ribbons. The ribbons unrolled back until Dicey saw her mama's face. But it wasn't her mama's own face she saw. It was the photograph the police in Bridgeport had shown her for identification. That far away face, lying back against a white pillow with the golden hair cut short, short all around it. The sadness of mama lost to them, maybe forever, was something Dicey carried around deep inside her all the time. And maybe that explained her edginess. Dicey wasn't used to carrying sadness around. She was used to seeing trouble and doing something about it. She just didn't know anything to do about Mama. What Dicey was used to, she realized, was things being simple, like a song. You sang the words and the melody straight through. That was the way she had brought her family down here to Crisfield, singing straight through. Graham probably knew something about carrying sorrow around. However she acted, Dicey knew Graham had cared about her three children, who all left her and never came back. She wondered how Graham carried her sorrows. Maybe someday when they had all gotten used to one another, she would ask. The first pale stars were coming out. It was the dark of the moon, so the stars burned brighter, especially the evening star, hanging just over the horizon. Dicey knew she should get back inside and send Maybeth and Sammy up to bed, but she didn't want to, and maybe she wouldn't. She lay on her back along the dock and looked up at the stars. The sky was turning black, and the stars burned out there, unchanging. All those stars, and those dark millions of light years... Dicey wondered if the space between was to push the stars apart or to hold them together. She jumped up impatiently. That was James's kind of idea, and when she started having ideas like that, it was time to get back inside. When she returned to the house, only James was still in the living room. Where are the little kids, Dicey asked. They went to bed half an hour ago. They're asleep. Graham tucked them in and went, to check up, went up to check later. You should have called me. Graham said maybe you wanted to be off on your own. She said you put in a long, hard summer with all of us, and we should remember that you might want to get away once in a while. Dicey didn't know what to answer. She was surprised to hear that Graham understood that. But still, she almost wished that Sammy and Maybeth hadn't wanted to go to bed without saying goodnight to her. James had his face in the book. Am I bothering you? Dicey asked. He shook his head, but his eyes were asking her questions. Is something wrong? His, uh, he put his eyes back on the page. I'm just wondering how things are going to go for us this year, and for me. I mean, it's not as if we were her real children, and it's school, too. But if it doesn't work out? She's going to adopt us. You heard her. She wants to. She likes us, Dicey said. She put us down in the Bible. I know, James said. But Dicey, 
you never understand because it's always so easy for you. You just go ahead and do what you want. And Sammy, too. And everybody likes my Beth. And I think Sammy must remind her of our Uncle Bullet. What are you talking about? Dicey demanded. But I never fit in. Not in Provincetown or coming down here if you think about it. I think about it. But you did. We did it together, Dicey pointed out. The trouble with James was he thought too much about things. Some people, they're always outsiders, wherever they are. So am I, Dicey told him, finally understanding what he was worrying about. Yeah, but you don't care, James said. Dicey couldn't argue with him about that. I wouldn't worry about it, James, she advised. Why not, he asked. Because it won't do any good, Dicey snapped. He didn't believe her, she could tell. She didn't let that bother her. She just picked up one of the books on the boat building on boat building and went up to read in bed. During the next week, Dicey settled herself into a routine. She rode her bike to school. The little kids took the bus, which stopped for them right by Graham's mailbox, sat through classes, and spent an hour exactly in Millie's store. Except for the windows, the difference Dicey's work made didn't show much the first week. But after she'd spent three hours on Saturday morning washing down the floors, the store really did look cleaner, more like a place where you would like to buy food. Dicey had planned out her week at the her work at the store, what to do first, second, third, during the long, slow school days, going from science to math to social studies to gym to English to home ec. The only class she couldn't think in was home ec, because there you had to do things. Stupid things, Dicey reported to James. They were starting with sewing, buttons first. It wasn't interesting, but you had to watch what you were doing, or you attracted Miss Eversley's attention, and she would come stand behind you at the long table, explaining over again all the boring things you had already listened to. How to thread a needle and tie the knot, how to position the button and lock it in place. Boring, boring, boring. Dicey had more important things to think about. Miss Eversley might care about all that stuff. That was her business, and Dicey guessed the tall, bony, white-haired woman didn't have anything better to do. But Dicey had much better things to do. She had her own routine. When she rode home from her job, Dicey would work for an hour on the boat, scraping off the old layers of paints before going inside to help Graham with supper or some other housework. After supper, she would listen to May Beth read for a while and help her review the lists of words. Then she would dash off the busy work her teachers gave as homework and spend an hour studying the boat books. On Sunday, Graham asked Dicey to give her some advice about the papers and pamphlets she had been given at the welfare office by the lawyer. I can't figure out these forms, Graham said, irritated. She had them all spread in front of her, covering half the long kitchen table. So you're going to have to put your nose into them and help me, girl. If Graham needed help, that was fine with Dicey. And if she couldn't figure things out, she could always enlist James's aid. Between us, she promised Graham, we can do anything. Humph, Graham said. I hope you're not counting on that. Dicey met her grandmother's eyes across the table. You do, you do it too, don't you, she asked. Worrying, she explained. Doesn't hurt to be prepared, Graham said. I've never taken charity, never wanted to. I don't expect to enjoy the experience. Don't expect it to be easy. I like to be prepared for the worst. It saves trouble. Dicey remembered that the next Wednesday when Maybeth came home from school with a note. As Dicey walked over from putting her bike away in the barn, she saw Graham shucking the last ears of corn from the garden. Graham sat on the back steps with her toes dug into the sun-warmed dirt. Something on the table you should look at, Graham told her. Dicey knew what it was before she picked it up, a note from Maybeth's teacher. Maybeth was always coming home with notes, saying, could they please have a conference, and not saying what they wanted to confer about. In Dicey's experience, what they wanted to talk about was what to do about Maybeth being so slow, about how they wanted to put her back a grade, which wasn't doing anything as far as Dicey could tell. Only the nun at the day camp in Bridgeport that summer had talked about really doing something. But what she had wanted to do was send Maybeth to a special school for retarded people. Dicey didn't believe Maybeth was retarded, not the way she could learn music, the melodies and the words. But Dicey couldn't be sure. How could she be sure? She made herself pick up the piece of paper from the table. She took the folded paper outside to sit beside Graham while she read it. It was from Maybeth's music teacher asking Graham to come in for a meeting the next day at 3.15 as soon as school left out. But Maybeth can sing, Dicey protested. She had never had a note from her music teacher before, Dicey told Graham. I don't know, Graham said. Her fingers, fingers pulled the long protective leaves from the ears of corn. This late in the season, half of the ears in her pile were too wormy to eat, though she tossed into a mound on a brown paper bag. I don't know what this young man is in such a hurry for. I'm sorry, Dicey said. I'll go in and see him before work. 
I'll go, Graham told her quickly. I was planning to. I'm the one who should, anyway. I'm the name that's on there. Thousands of forms. Dicey was so relieved she didn't know what to say. Instead, she picked up an ear and started pulling off the leaves. I'm sorry, she said again. You don't look it, Graham observed. Dicey suddenly looked up at her grandmother's face. Graham rewarded her with a sudden smile and spoke briskly. You're not the only one responsible, girl. You've been responsible for a long time and done a good job. Take a rest now. Dicey nodded her head and that was that. She finished the corn and dropped the husks into the garbage can on her way out to work on the sailboat. And that finally, my friends, is chapter one of Dicey's song. So what does Maybeth's teacher want? Let's find out soon. I will definitely try to get back to you guys with the next chapter much more quickly. And I will... Just read until we get to a certain period of time, like I said, 15 or 20 minutes in the future. And if the chapter's done, cool. If the chapter's not done, we'll pick it up in the next video because I don't want you guys to get bored. And like I said, I despise when my videos get cut off in the middle. And I don't know that it's happening. That's the weird thing you guys may not realize is that when I hit like 32, 33 minutes sometimes, the video will continue to record. And then when I finish, Suddenly it's broken into like a 30 minute video and a two minute video. So just so you guys know, I am not aware of that when it's happening and I hate it as much as you guys probably do. It's super distracting. So I apologize. So I, like I said, I feel like if I keep all of my reading videos and try to keep all of my videos as a general rule to like 20 minutes, even if they have to be broken into two parts, then it will be my decision where I can break them and it won't be as awkward for you guys viewing. So that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. But um, I hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, I don't know that I'll read the rest of the Tillerman cycle after this. I think there are like eight books in all. But to be perfectly honest, Homecoming and Dicey Song are by far my favorites. Um, I'd have to go back through my Goodreads and see what my reviews were for the other books. There may be one or two others I could read to you. I don't actually own them. I have um, audio, not audiobooks, ebook versions of them. So I'd have to read them off of my iPad. But um, we'll see. We'll see. That's far down the road. We're just getting started with this one. But anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying. I hope you have a wonderful day. I made these little earrings yesterday. I'm very proud of them. My friend Terry is awesome, and she sends me wonderful gifts all the time. And she sent me some super cute um, earrings. And I thought, you know, gosh, where do you get your little charms to make your earrings from? And I had completely forgotten that my girlfriend Mary sent me, or, or gave me rather, a huge, 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 like massive amount of jewelry making supplies a few years ago. And I basically have just used the beads. And when I went through it again, I was like, oh my gosh, there are tons and tons and tons of charms in here. And there are uh, fish hook um, ear wires. So I started making earrings yesterday. So I hope you like them. I think they're kind of fun. I didn't have two pink or two purple. So I mixed those together. But anyway, ramblies. All right, guys, thanks for listening. I will be back soon with more stuff and have an awesome rest of your day. Bye, guys.